Hello, grade fours. This is chapter two, addition and subtraction. I know you might be looking at this uh, thing, title, and think addition and subtraction, but that's for babies. We've already done it. Well, it's more of rules and properties and names for those rules and properties. We use addition properties and subtraction rules to add and subtract. These properties and rules help us add numbers mentally. There are three main properties of addition and two subtraction rules to keep in mind as you add and subtract. We start with the commutative property. So the commutative property we have 6 plus 7 equals to 13 and 7 plus 6 also equals to 13. So, so the order of numbers in an addition statement doesn't matter. So you have the example, it's basically just a plus b equals to b plus a. The associative property is like the commutative property except with brackets. It's where you put the brackets or parentheses in an addition statement does not matter. The example they gave us, or well, we're going to give you actually, is 3 plus 7 in brackets plus 6 equals to 16. 3 plus 7 plus 6 in brackets equals to 16. Now, why do we need to learn the associative property? Because of the order of operations. If you aren't familiar with the order of operations, it essentially states which operations in a mathematical sentence you should do first. Like, should you do multiplication first or should you do addition first? If you don't know, it's multiplication first. In the order of operations, brackets always come first. So here, it's saying that although the brackets come first, it doesn't really matter where you put the brackets if the statement is pure addition. Say 3 plus 7 is equal to 10, and then 10 plus 6 equals to 16. 3 plus 7 plus 6 equals to 13, but 3 plus 13 equals to 16 too. If we have to sum up the associative property, it would be a plus brackets B plus C equals to A plus B in brackets plus C equals to A plus C in brackets plus B. This is a combination of the commutative property and the associative property since we're also switching around the order. Moving on, we have the identity property. Anything plus zero equals to that thing. Say seven plus zero equals to seven, zero plus seven still equals to seven. It's a plus zero equals to a. If it's 100 plus zero, it's still 100.
if it's 87,498 plus zero, then it's still equal to... I said 87,000, right? 498? Yeah, essentially it's just whatever plus zero equals to whatever. Anything plus zero equals to that thing. Of course, the number doesn't magically transform. Hmm. What are other ways to say this? Oh, one number plus zero equals to itself. There, that's a good summation. Now we're done with the three addition properties. We're going to move on to the subtraction rules. Don't ask me why one of them is called property and one of them is called rules. Now the subtraction rules don't really have a name. It's just rules. 4 minus 0 equals to 4. Anything minus 0 equals to that thing. It's like the identity property all over again, except this time it's for subtraction. And the identity property is only for addition. Now, we have the other rule. 6 minus 6 equals to 0. Anything minus that thing equals to 0. If you want a more algebraic representation for the first one, we get a minus 0 equals to a. And for this one, we get a minus a equals to 0. That's a 0, not a 6, guys. Think about it. If you have, I won't use 4, 8 cookies, and you don't do anything with them, and nobody takes them, then there's still going to be 8 cookies. But if you had 14 cookies, and uh, seagulls stole 14 of them, all 14 of them, then you're going to have no cookies left. Seagulls are vicious creatures when it comes to stealing things, okay? Anyhow, complete each number sentence. Identify the property or rule used. So we have... Uh, 9 plus 2 plus 7 equals to 7 plus 2 plus what? So we realize that there's 7 on both sides, there's 2 on both sides, and it's missing a 9. So it's plus 9. Are there any brackets? No. So it's not the associative property. Is it addition or subtraction? It's addition. So it's going to be either the commutative property or the identity property. Is there any zeros in here? No. So it's not the identity property. And the numbers, the order of the numbers, are, well, changed. Therefore, it's a commutative property. Now, we have another one. First, we identify whether or not it is addition or subtraction. Now, this is pretty obviously an addition sign. So, it's addition. It's going to end in property. And we're going to take a good look at it and see which one it is. There's a zero in there, and it's something with zero added to it, which means that the, it's the identity property. And what does the identity property tell us? That anything plus zero equals to that thing. So something plus 0 equals to 3. 3 plus 0 equals to 3. Now, 
we're going to move on. This one has a subtraction sign. So it's one of the subtraction rules. Rule. Since the rules don't really have names, well, we're just going to do it with the algebraic one. So that's 12 minus something equals to 0. Remember, there was this one rule which was a minus a equals to 0. Yeah. And since a equals to a, then what's this blank? 12. 12 minus 12 equals to 0. Oh, those seagulls. If you get that joke, well, the one that I made previously. <laughs> Nobody's laughing? Okay. 5 minus something equals to 5. Remember that other rule, which was a minus 0 equals to a? Yeah, this is that rule. So, if this is a, and this is also a because it's their equal, then what's this blank? Zero. Now that's it for section one. If you want to take a break and do some practice problems at any time, then feel free to do so. For now, we're going to move on. Estimate sums and differences. Since we already know basic addition, then we're going to do some estimation and rounding. So an estimate is an answer close to the exact answer. Wow. There's two answers. Well, there's two answers, a word, in that sentence. That's okay. When estimating, you can round to the nearest 10, 100, or 1,000. In fact, if you have decimals, you can round to the nearest one. Trust me on this. Once you get into higher grades, you start rounding to weird things. Anyhow, for this we have 78 plus 51. Estimate 78 plus 51 to the nearest 10. So 78 can be rounded up because we're looking at the ones digit to round to the nearest 10. And the ones digit is an 8. And 8 is bigger than 5, which means that we round up. And that becomes 80. Now 51 is, well, we look at the ones digit, it's a 1, 1 smaller than 5, so we round down. Rounds to 50. So the sum would be 80 plus 50 equals to... 130. So 78 plus 51 is about 130. The actual answer is 129, which is pretty close. Estimate 1478 minus 842 to the nearest hundred. So for the nearest hundred, we look at the tens place. For the first one, the tens place is, well, a 7. And a 7 is bigger than a 5, so we're going to round up to 1,500. 842, we look at the tens place, and it's a 4. 4 is smaller than 5, so we round down to 800. And then we subtract. We end up with we regroup, and we get 700. Therefore, 1,478 minus 842 is about 700. That isn't actually that accurate, because you're rounding to the nearest 100. You will find that the higher the value you round to, the less accurate it gets. As you can see, for the one that we rounded to 10, the actual value was 129, which was extremely close. For this one, though, the actual value is 636, which isn't that close. But what about for the nearest thousand? Well, 
for the nearest thousand, we have to round with, well, the hundred. Over here, the hundred is a two, so we round down to 67,000. And then over here, the hundreds place is a seven, and seven is bigger than five, so we round up to 7,000. Now we add this, and we get regroup. 74,000. Now you will find, as I've said, that the higher values you round to, the less accurate it's going to be. But that also means that uh, more numbers are considered appropriate or acceptable as an estimate. Because think about it. If this is uh, the range of estimates that you could get, and this is the actual answer, then this would be close. If this was a range, and this was the actual answer, this is about, I say, 20%. So this bit would be close. You, you get the idea now? If you guys want the actual value for this, it's... better of an estimate than, well, this one right here. It's only 42 off, while this one is 64 off. Now we're just going to do some practice problems. Estimate, round to the nearest 10. 78 plus 25. So 78 you look at the ones digit for the nearest 10. You just look at the digit. You look at the digit they're supposed to round to, and then you go one digit to the right. Eight and five. Both of these are five or bigger, so we're rounding both of these up. 80 plus 30 equals, approximately equals to, remember guys, curly equal signs. 80 plus 30, which is equal to 110. Now, we go on to the second question. Run to the nearest 10, we look at the ones place. One's a four, one's a nine. Four is smaller than five, but nine is bigger than five. So for the one with the four, the first one, we're gonna round down. And then for the one with the nine, we're going to round up. We end up with the solution that 624 plus 509 is approximately equal to 1100 or 1130. Now we move on to subtraction. 837 minus 126. It's still to the nearest 10. We look at the ones. Both of them are larger than five, so we're gonna round both of them up. To 840 minus 130 equals to 710. Therefore, 837 minus 126 is approximately equal to 710. Now, we have 935 minus 222. Two, two, two. Anyhow, I'll just stop my ridiculousness an urge to make puns, but five is, well, five and bigger, so we're gonna round up for the first number. 
and 2 is smaller than 5. We're going to round down. We get 940 minus 220 equals to 720. Therefore, 935 minus 222 is approximately equal to 720. The actual solution is 713. Not that bad of an estimate. Now it's rounding to the nearest hundred. So we have the nearest hundred, which means we have to look one digit to the right, which is the tens. Over here, for the fifth question, both the tens places are smaller than five. We're going to round both of these down. Oh, curly line. Because it's approximate now and we're rounding. To 900 plus 300, which is equal to 1,200. We reach the conclusion that 916 plus 348 is approximately equal to 1,200. The actual answer is 1,264, which is actually slightly closer to 1,300. But it's an estimate, so it doesn't need to be that close. 3,179 plus 401 is, well... We look at the tens digit, one of them seven, one of them zero. Seven is bigger than five, zero is not. And we end up with rounding the first one up and the second one down. That's 3,200 plus 400, which is then equal to up 3,600. That's not that bad of an estimate, considering that the actual answer is 3,580. We move on to the subtraction one. We look at the tens, they're both bigger then 5, so we're both rounding, well, we're rounding them both up. We're rounding both of them up. Huh, English is a strange language. You can say the same sentence with the same words that have the same meaning in the different syntax and still have them mean the same. Okay. Anyhow, this is going to be 700, and this is going to be 200. That's 500 approximately, which is quite close to the real answer. The real answer is 512. We move on to the last of the nearest hundred questions. 8,901 and 3,188. We look at the tens. We have to round one of them up and one of them down. The one with the 0 is rounded down, the one with the 8, which is bigger than 5, is rounded up. So we round this one down and we get just plain 8,900 minus round this one up, 3,200 equals to 5,700. Now let's see, what's the actual answer? It's actually not that bad. The actual answer is just 5,713. We're going to move on to the thousands questions. So we're at the thousands. And remember what I said about going to the right one digit? I know I'm using my left hand, but... For you guys, this is a right. And if you take thousand and you go right one digit, that's hundred. So we're just gonna look at the hundreds place. There's a nine and the two. 
for the ninth question. Okay, nine is bigger than five. Two is smaller than five. So we're going to have to round the one with the nine up to six thousand. And we're going to have to round the one with the two down to three thousand. Now we have to add that up. Yep, it's addition, so we're going to add. And we get 9,000. Therefore, 5,923 plus 3,293 is approximately equal to 9,000. Now we're going to move on. 6,491 and 2,471. We're going to look at the hundreds place and there's, well, the same hundreds place for both numbers and that's a 4. And 4 is smaller than 5, which means that we will have to round down to 6,000 plus 2,000. Fun fact! Depending on which country you're in, you may need the comma here, and you may not. Now 6,000 plus 2,000 is equal to 8,000. Here's the thing. We're rounding both of these down. So in addition, when you round two numbers in the same direction, such as down or up, chances are, well, it's not going to go well. It's going to be not that good of an estimate. However, if one of the numbers is rounded up and one of the numbers is rounded down, the estimate is probably going to be closer. Such as for this one, the actual solution is... Uh, 8,900 something. Which, last time I checked, is closer to 9,000 than 8,000. Now for subtraction, it's the opposite. If you round both of the things the same way, such as up or down, then the estimate is going to be closer than if you round one down and the other one up. 5,684 minus 1,952. Now there's the hundreds place of six and nine. 6 and 9 are both bigger than 5, which means that we have to round up to 6,000 minus 2,000, which is 4,000. If you want an actual, well, the actual exact number, Here you go. That's a three, by the way. Which I would say is pretty close. Ah, okay. Here, we have 94,021 minus 1,827. We look at the hundreds place. There's a zero and an eight. Zero is smaller than five. Eight is well bigger than five. So the one with the zero is rounded down to just plain old 94,000. Minus the one with the eight is rounded up into 2,000. And that would be equal to 92,000. The actual answer to this is 
I'm just saying that it's a general trend for, say, when it's... Let's just say that this was something like 94 and 478 minus 1,521. This would still give the estimate of 92,000, but the actual answer would be closer to, well, 93,000. Sometimes they are pretty accurate, it's just that it's easier to not be accurate when one's rounded in the opposite direction of the other, at least for subtraction. In addition, it's a complete opposite of subtraction. But before we go into pattern, we're going to be doing some problem solving skills. Oh, you estimate an answer when you do not need an exact answer. Find an exact answer when you actually do need to find an exact value for the answer. Paul's neighbor hires him to mow his lawn. Paul charges $11.20 an hour to mow a yard. The neighbor asks Paul how much it will take or cost to mow his yard. He thinks it will take about two hours to mow his lawn. That is a big yard. How much does Paul tell his neighbor it will cost? Well, actually, no, that depends. If it's an electric lawnmower or a motor-powered one, it's not... It's, it's a big yard. If it's a hand-powered one, though, that, 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 those things take a while. So what do we know? We know how much Paul charges an hour. We know how much he thinks it is going to cost approximately for his neighbor. Because, well, by cost, I mean time-wise here. What do we need to find? How much does Paul, or should Paul, tell his neighbor it will cost? Now here's the thing. Does Paul need an exact answer or an estimate? I mean, he could technically do both, but is his neighbor expecting an estimate or an exact answer? His neighbor, as long as his neighbor uh, is just, you know, not the type of neighbor that you would find to be extremely annoying, and the not well, doesn't have certain disorders that makes them uh, feel the need to have an exact answer, they're probably expecting an estimate. Because it's almost impossible to tell exactly how much time it will take to mow somebody's lawn. Sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes a squirrel might pass by and you don't, well, you don't want to hurt the squirrel, so then you have to pause your work, and then you have to wait for the squirrel to go away. It probably goes away really quickly, but you get what I mean. Things happen. So we're just going to do an estimate. Paul charges $11.20. Some places actually use a comma for this place. Well, the decimal point is a decimal comma, but we're not that place. Now, let's fill that decimal point in a little bit more. Okay, times approximately two hours would be $22.40. Now, here's the thing. When determining how long it will take to mow the lawn, is it better for Paul to estimate higher or lower? It is better in Paul's interest to estimate higher because uh, think about it if it only ends up taking an hour and a half then well the neighbor's happy first of all because it didn't take as long as he thought it would and it isn't going to take as much money which means that the neighbor also probably brought enough money with him or readied enough money to pay for Paul's, well, mowing services. And for the final cost, 
It is also better for him to estimate higher, like instead of estimating that this is $20, it is better for him to say that it will take around $25. Because just in case he takes a little more time than he thinks he did, or would have, then, well, the neighbor still has enough money to pay him. <laughs> because think about it, a lot of people, well, some people only charge cash. And a lot of people nowadays don't use cash, they use uh, credit cards, PayPal, their phone paying services, yada 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 yada. Now, the answer to this would be $25. Why not 20? Because again, it's better to estimate higher. Now, we're going to tell or determine whether an estimate or an exact number is in, or answer is needed. Then solve. A family drove 173 miles to visit friends and then drove 393 miles to a national park. That is a lot of miles. About how many miles did they drive? So it asks for about how many miles. The moment you see about, you should probably realize that you don't need an exact answer. Now we're going to round. Here's the thing. You could round to the nearest hundred or you could round to the nearest tenth. And we should know by now, because I've told you this, that if you round to the nearest ten, it'd be more accurate than while well, rounding to the nearest hundred. Let's say round this to the nearest 10, or well, these both to the nearest 10. Then it's 170 and 390, because 3 is smaller than 5, so we round down. But if you round to the nearest 100, you get 200 and 400. Now the sum of both of these is 390 plus 170 equals to 560. That's a zero, guys. And then this is just equal to 600. The actual answer is 566. Now, technically, both of these answers are correct because it asks for an estimate. And both of these are rounded estimates. Now, a zoo has two hippopotamuses. Oh, goodness, I just got reminded of that song that you listen to about a hippopotamus. <coughs> <coughs> Cough, you remember that song? You do know which song I'm referring to, right? Okay, then. A zoo has two hippopotamuses that each eats 110 pounds of grass a day. It's 470 pounds of grass, enough to feed them for three days. Now, this is a yes or no question. You could solve this by estimation. You could also solve this by exact number. Calculation. Exact number calculation. Yeah, let's just call that that. Both of those would work. If you estimate, you get each of them eats around 100 pounds of grass a day, two hippopotamuses is 200 pounds of grass a day, and for three days that would be three times 200, which is 600, and 600 is more than 470. You could also say, 2 times 110 is 210, 210 times 3 is equal to 660, which is more than 870. 
So yeah, either way the answer is no. No. While on vacation, Becky took 195 pictures. Jesus, that is a lot of pictures. Wow. Jack took 86 pictures. Still a lot, but not too bad. They're on vacation. It depends on what they're doing for vacation. If they're going on a tour around Asia, Europe, South America, Northern Africa, or Australia, or tour around anywhere, chances are they're going to take a lot of pictures. If they're just going on a vacation to the beach, like just the beach, the nearest beach, then well, uh, that's a bit excessive of an amount of pictures. And Seth took 102 pictures. About how many pictures did they all take? So it asks for about. Therefore, we can estimate, and we should estimate. We get 195, 86, and 102. Sometimes they would say 102 instead of like zero, because zero, O, oh, they look very similar. And while well, everybody, it's a common enough saying so that people would understand what you're trying to get at. You could round to the nearest 10 or you could round to the nearest 100. Now in case you haven't noticed, we have 86 and 195 and all of that. And 86 is a little bit far from 100, so it's honestly a better idea to round to the nearest 10. That would give us, oh, this would be 200 anyways. Now this is a 6 in the 1's place, and 6 is bigger than 5. That has a 2 in the 1's place, so that's rounded down to 100. And we end up with a sum of... 390. So you could say that they took approximately 390 pictures, or you could round to the nearest 100, and this would still be 200, and this would still be 100. And we'd get that they took around 400 pictures. Both of these answers would be correct, because they're not baseless estimates. They are educated estimates. Oh yeah, that reminds me of a classmate that I had. And in s once the teacher asked them how they got the answer to the problem, and they didn't know how to respond, so they were like, I made an educated guess. And the teacher just stared. <laughs> it was pretty funny at the time. Brian scored a 68 on his first science quiz. If you're in the U.S., this would be a very painful mark, because in the U.S., 60 is a fail. If you're in Canada, this would still be, or Canada or the Australia, I'm not sure about New Zealand, though. This would still be a very painful mark, because 50 is a fail. If you're in the U.K., though, apparently this wouldn't be that painful of a mark. Brian scored a 68 on his first science quiz. On his second science quiz, Brian scored a 93. Wow! By about how many points did Brian improve his score? It says about. There's two ways we could do with this. We could find an exact answer and then round. Or we could round first 93, 3, 3, you round down, it's smaller than 5, to 90, 68, it's an 8, 8 is bigger than 5, you round up to a 70, and then we get an answer. Both of these are not bad estimates, because the exact answer is 25, which is right between 30 and 20. If you answer either of these, 
it will still be considered a good answer. Now, Travis ran the 50-yard dash in 12 seconds. After practicing, Travis ran the 50-yard dash in 9 seconds. How many seconds faster was Travis after practicing? It says how many seconds, not about how many seconds, not approximately how many seconds, but just plain how many seconds. Therefore, we actually have to have a exact answer. 12 minus 9 equals to 3. He was 3 seconds faster. Maria is shopping for school clothes. You mean a uniform? She buys a sweater for 35.67 dollars or 35 dollars and 67 cents. A jacket for $53.99 and a skirt for $17.46. I'm just going to say this, but our graduation sweater in middle school was actually $50. <laughs> so that sweater is actually not a bad price. How much money does she spend? It says how much money. Not approximately, not about, not around, just plain how much, which means that we have to find an exact answer. So you just add them up. I'm going to add them up by three. Adding two, well, more than two things, actually. At a time is basically the same as adding two things, except you consider three things at once. So 7 plus 9 plus 6 equals to 22, and then 6 plus 4 is equal to 10, and then 9 plus 2 is 11, and then 10 plus 11 is also 22 again. Wow. Wow. Okay, I'll stop. You drag the decimal point down. 3 plus 7 is 10, 5 plus 2 is 7, 10 plus 7 is 17. 3 plus 5 plus 1 plus 1 is like 8 plus 1 plus 1, which is 8 plus 2, which is 10. She spends $107.22. Period. Always add periods at the end of your sentences, kids. Oh! We're on adding again. Now adding numbers in vertical form is just, wow. See this verticalness? Yeah. You add the things that are stacked on top of each other and you regroup if you need to. Remember regrouping? Stuff that I taught you or your other teachers taught you a few grades before or last grade, sometime before, yeah. Now here, we're just going to do six questions about this, because why not? 8 plus 2 is equal to 10, but you can't fit 10 there, so you regroup. And then you get 1 plus 9 plus 0 is equal to 10. And you can't fit 10 there, so you have to regroup again. And you get 1 plus 4 plus 1, which is equal to 6. And you don't need to regroup. Oh no! There's nothing under the 6. What do we do? We add nothing. Which means that we just get 6. The solution, the sum, whatever you want to call it, is... Well, actually, no. Don't call it the quotient, because that's for division. Is 6,600. Amazing. Continuing swiftly on. 3 plus 1, 4. 1 plus 9 or 9 plus 1? Commutative property of addition, kids. 10. You regroup because you can't fit 10 there. 1 plus 1 plus 5? 7. 7 plus 3? 
ten. You don't have anything to regroup to? Well, you don't. You just drag it down, and you get ten thousand seven hundred and four. Here, it's seven plus two is equal to nine. One plus six is equal to seven. Nine plus one is equal to ten, and we get one thousand and seventy-nine. Here, over here, here, here. Let me just repeat here. <laughs> Why not? Actually, no, don't do that. Four plus three, seven. Zero plus five, five. Two plus eight. Ten. You regroup. One plus eight plus seven. Sixteen. You get sixteen thousand and fifty-seven. One thousand two hundred and ninety-four. Four plus eight. Because eight is right under it. For some weird reason, this string of eights reminds me of pasta. Anyhow, four plus eight, twelve. You regroup. One plus nine plus eight, eighteen. You regroup again. One plus two plus eight is equal to eleven. You regroup again. One plus one is equal to two. That's two thousand one hundred and eighty-two. Zero plus zero equals to zero. Identity property of addition: anything plus zero equals to anything, including when that anything is zero. One plus six, seven. Six plus seven, thirteen. Oh,、well, that looks like a decimal point. I meant that to be a comma. One thousand three hundred and seventy. We're now done addition. That was a relaxing section. If you guys want to take a break in between any section, you can do so if you want. If you don't want to take a break or you just came back, well, hi, I'm still here. And this is subtracting numbers. It's exactly like addition, except instead of adding, you subtract. I know, right? Oh yeah, you also have to regroup in a different way. <laughs> Four minus eight doesn't work, so we borrow, borrow, as in take and never give back, one from the five. And because we're borrowing one from the tens digit, we're technically borrowing ten, and we get fourteen minus eight, which is six. And then, because five got one taken off of it, it's now four. Four minus one equals to three. Eight minus seven equals to one. We get one hundred and thirty-six as the answer. If we want to use addition to check, we have one hundred and thirty-six plus seven hundred and eighteen equals to six plus eight. Oh yeah! By the way, for addition, you could put the regrouped one down here or up there, but for subtraction, you usually put it up up there. We get eight hundred and fifty-four, which is equal to eight hundred and fifty-four. Therefore, our answer is correct. Now here, zero minus three does not work because you guys haven't learned addition and subtraction of integers yet. Don't worry, that's coming up in the future in grade five. Am I sounding like a robot? Good, because I'm doing this on purpose. Anyhow, if you're taught to regroup in any way except that, don't. So then you regroup and you add, drag one over, and that becomes the,、um, the ten because zero, and then you drag one over, and that's just ten. And then ten minus three equals to seven. And because you regrouped one out of nine, it becomes an eight, and then eight minus three is equal to five. Eight minus six is equal to two. One minus nothingness is still equal to one, so we get one thousand two hundred and fifty-seven. Now here, here we have two minus one is equal to one. Four minus eight doesn't work, so we regroup one out of 
seven. We can, you don't regroup two. You don't need to regroup two, and you just regroup one. Always, always, kids. Anyhow, 14 minus 8 is equal to 6. 7 had 1 taken out of it. It just had 1 chunk taken out of it. And that chunk is labeled 1. So now 7 is 6. 6 minus 2 equals to 4. And we get 461. Here we have 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. And because it's 0, we don't need to actually write that down. Because, well, it's the last, actually not last, it's the leftmost digit. So if the leftmost digit is just a 0, you don't actually need to put it on. If there's a zero in the middle, though, like, say, 404, then yes, you do need to put it in. If there's a zero at the end, such as 440, you also need to put it at the end. It's just that you don't, you see nobody writing 044, that's just 44, which is just 44. Why am I using 4 as a reference example, whatever you want to call it? I have no idea. I just chose a random number, and it came up with 4. The solution, oh, to question number four is 442, or 442. Now this, this is a problem. We are actually going to spend section seven talking about this. Now we have four minus seven, which doesn't work, which means that we have to borrow. But we can't borrow from zero, so zero has to borrow. It's like... Think about it as this. You need to borrow lunch money from another kid in your class. But that kid doesn't have lunch money either. So you both. So he ends up borrowing lunch money from the teacher. And then gives you half of his lunch money. Yeah. Now, borrow, borrow. It's now 14 minus 7, which is just 7. And since... 0 borrowed 1, it's 10. But it also got 1 borrowed away from it, which means that it's 10 minus 1, which is 9. Now 9 minus 3 equals to 6. 5 had 1 borrowed away from it, which means that it's 4 now. 4 minus 0 is still 4. 8 minus 1 is 7. 7, 4, 6, 7. 7,467. We're on the last question of the section now. 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. 0 minus 2 is equal to, well, that doesn't work. So then you borrow from the next number, which is 1. And you get 10 minus 2, which is 8. But now 1 is 0. And you can't do 0 minus 9. At least not in vertical subtraction. So what do you do? 0 borrows from 7. Now it's 10. 10 minus 9 is 1. And 7 got 1 borrowed away from it. Therefore, it's now a 6. And 6 minus 0 is just 6. 6,182. Now if you remember how to regroup, that would have been an extremely easy section. Or extremely easy two sections. If you didn't remember how to regroup, then I hope that it got through to you, and you have now remembered how to regroup. Now, we move on. Problem solving investigation. You estimate an answer when you do not need an exact answer. Find an exact answer when you need to find exactly how much. This is basically the same as the previous problem solving investigation that we had encountered in this exact same chapter. Exact. But, well, it's slightly different. Estimate the answer. Jim has 849 stickers. Lizzie has 192 stickers. And Carly has 215 stickers. I used to have a sticker collection like that. I don't know where it went. Do the children have more than 1,000 stickers altogether? 
So you can estimate by rounding to the nearest hundred, or you could do the nearest tens. For this one, the nearest hundred would suffice. 849, the tens place is a 4, which means that you have to round down to 800. Lizzie has 192, the tens place is a 9, bigger than 5, which means you round up to 200. Carly has 215 stickers, 15, the tens place is a 1, so you round down to 200. And you add them all together, you get 1,200. So, yes! They do! Okay, now, find the exact answer. Ethan has 8 stickers. Zach has 403 stickers. And Ricky has 377 stickers. How many stickers do the boys have together? Or all together? Well, we find the exact answer, so we just do some addition. Now what's 8 plus 3 plus 7? 18. What's 0 plus 7 plus 1? 8. What's 4 plus 3? Seven. So the boys have 788 stickers all together. So we're going to do some practice problems. Lucas has 83 toy cars. His brother has 195 toy cars. You can see the favorite child here. How many toy cars do they have in all? Which plan can help you solve the problem? Okay, so you read the problem. How many toy cars do they have in all? Which means that it asks for the exact number. Because it doesn't say about how many, it just says how many. So the plan would be B. Add. Plan B. Get the joke? Plan B? Anyhow. How many toy cars do the boys have in all? Well, you carry out plan B. And then you end up with 278, which is answer G. We continue. Haru has 134 football cards, 819 baseball cards, and 89 hockey cards. I really want to make a Canada joke right now. Does Haru have more than 1,000 cards in all? Here's the thing. What plan can help solve the problem? You can find the exact sum, or you can estimate to see if the sum of all the numbers is greater than 1,000. Except the problem over here is that, well, <laughs> these aren't the right numbers. Therefore, you have to find the exact sum. Sometimes questions are tricky like that. Now, does Haru have more than 1,000 cards in all? Well, let's carry out our plan, plan A. And we get, oh, that's a very stout 4. Anyhow. 4 plus 9 plus 9 is equal to 22. Don't ask how I solved it that fast. 2 plus 3 plus 1 plus 8 is equal to 14. And then 1 plus 8 plus 1 is equal to 10. So we get 1,042. So yes, he has more than 1,000 cards. The answer is still G. Connie traveled 613 miles over spring break. Alexa traveled 291 miles. How many more miles did Connie travel than Alexa? So it asks for how many more miles. 
which means that you have to find an exact answer or the exact difference. And that would be Three hundred and twenty-two, which is answer C. So right now we're going to have questions, or a question, which has parts of the question, that is not multiple choice. Danielle had $105. She bought a video game. Nice. She now has $72. About how much did the game cost? So it asks for about how much did the game cost? Which means that we need to do estimation. Estimate. And to find the cost of the game, we have to do well. You see, the equation works like this. 105, subtract the cost of the game. I'll just say G is equal to 72, which means that 105 minus 72 equals to the cost of the game. So then we have to estimate 105 minus 72. We could round to the nearest, we should round to the nearest 10 for this, because in case you haven't noticed, if we round both of these to the nearest 100, we're going to get 100 minus 100, and that's zero, which is not, well, the, the game obviously didn't cost zero dollars. So we round to the nearest 10. It's a 5 and the 2. 5 has to be rounded up, so we get 110 and minus 70, which is 40. So the game cost around 40 dollars. We're going to go on to the last section. But it's not time to slack off yet. Subtraction across zeros. Subtraction that involves digits that are zeros use the same steps as subtraction that involves digits that are not zeros, except regrouping is just a tad bit more annoying. Now you see, there's a 1 over here, which means that 0 minus 1, it won't work, but you can't borrow from the 0. So then the borrowing, the borrowing has to go from the nearest non-zero digit, which in this case is an 8. And then 8 borrows to uh, the next 0. You can't just teleport digits, okay? And that 0 becomes a 10, but then this 0 needs help, so 10 lends a friendly hand to the next 0, its neighbor, and 10 becomes a 9, and this 0 becomes a 10. So 10 minus 1 is equal to 9, and because this 0 here is now 9, 9 minus 8 is equal to 1. 8 borrowed out 1, therefore it is now a 7. 7 minus 3 is equal to 4. That's 419. What about here? 2100 minus 2018. Now, we borrow from the nearest non-zero digit, which is the one over here. And 10 minus 8 equals to 2. This 10 has borrowed out a 1 to form this 10 over here, which means that this 10 is now a 9. 9 minus 1 is equal to 8. 1 is now 0 because it borrowed everything out. And that's just 0 minus 0 equals to 0. 2 minus 2 is also equal to 0, so you don't actually have to write these down. That's just 82. And now, the nearest non-zero digit is extremely far. So, it looks something like this. Now this is a 10 now. 10 minus 8 equals to 2. This is a 9 now because it used to be a 10. And then it borrowed one out to make this 10. And then that would be a 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. You put the decimal point over here. It has also become a 9 because it borrowed one out to this 10, which is also now a 9. So that's just 
9 minus 3 equals to 6. And these two are both 9s. So that's 9, 9. The 1 over here has now become a 0. So we don't need to drag it down. This is equal to $996.82. Here, the nearest non-zero digit is a 5. You borrow out, you get 10, minus 3 is equal to 7, and this 10 is now a 9, 9 minus 3 is equal to 6, this 10 is now another 9, 9 minus 7 equals to 2, and then this 5 is now a 4, 4 minus 1 equals to 3, 3,267. That's it, kids. That's the end of the chapter. I guess I'll see you next chapter.